Hello everyone, I'm Jacob Kauf and I'm the Nerd on the Street and today we are installing Ubuntu 20.04. All right, everybody, Ubuntu 20.04 Focal Fossa was released earlier this week. Being the first release in an even-numbered year, this is a long-term support release, which means that it is supported until April 2025, so lots of people are going to be using this, both on their desktops and laptops at home, as well as on their servers. Now, when I've done Ubuntu installations in the past, I've gotten a lot of questions about how to create the installation media. So today, I don't have a physical computer to install Ubuntu on like I usually do, but I am actually going to talk about how to make physical installation media on a USB flash drive, just in case you want to install this on an actual computer. After we're done talking about that, I'll show you what the installation process is going to look like in a virtual machine. To install this on a physical computer, you will need a USB flash drive that is at least 4 gigabytes large. The Ubuntu image is 2.5 gigabytes, so you need something bigger than that. But aside from that, this should be pretty straightforward, so let's go ahead and jump to the desktop. Alright guys, so here we are on the desktop, and if you're wanting to install Ubuntu 20.04, there are two files you need to download first. The first one is Ubuntu itself. You can download Ubuntu at ubuntu.com slash download slash desktop. There's a green download button you can click right here, and that is going to start downloading the Ubuntu ISO image. Now the second thing you want to download is a program to flash that ISO image onto a USB flash drive. For this, I like to recommend Etcher. Now Etcher is not the best program from a technical standpoint, it's kind of loaded for what it does, but from a usability standpoint, it is the best. It is as idiot proof as you can get when it comes to flashing USB flash drives. So for that reason, if you're having to ask what program to use, I would recommend Etcher. There are plenty of other alternatives out there, but you can get Etcher at etcher.io, which redirects to bellina.io slash Etcher and there's a green button right here to download. Etcher is available for all major operating systems, so you can use this on one of your other computers or if you're coming from Windows, for instance. Once those two things have been downloaded, you're going to have your .iso image for Ubuntu and you'll have your Bellina Etcher Electron zip file. So since I'm here on Linux, Etcher is going to come as an app image. We're just going to open up the zip file and here's the .app image file that will run. I'm going to click and drag this app image file to extract it. And then I can just click on this app image file to run it, and I will go ahead and execute because this is a program. Once Etcher opens up, you'll see how simple the interface is. There are three buttons here, select image, select target, and flash. So all you have to do is click select image. This is going to bring up a file browser, and you can select your ubuntu.iso file. And then select target, you're going to click on your USB flash drive that you want to use. Now Etcher is great because it shows you both the label of the drive as well as the size so you can really be sure that you're flashing to the right drive. You can see here I've got a one terabyte hard drive plugged in right now and a 250 gigabyte hard drive. I don't have any flash drives plugged in and Etcher is warning me that these are both large drives that I probably don't want to overwrite with a 2.5 gigabyte Ubuntu image. I'm going to hit escape to get back out of that. If I do go ahead and plug in an actual 8 gigabyte flash drive, I can click select target again and now you can see I've got my Kingston 8 gigabyte flash drive that I can select. Once I click on that, I can click continue and now I can just click flash. I am going to be asked for my password because this is going to erase the drive. After I put that password in, the flash is going to start. Etcher gives us a nice little progress bar here. Once the actual flashing is done, Etcher is also going to go through and validate that the flash was successful and the data is good, which is nice. And finally, Etcher is going to automatically unmount that drive for us, so now all we have to do is unplug the drive and plug it into whatever computer we want to install Ubuntu on. Now at that point, it's going to be up to you to know your computer, because every computer is different with what key you have to push. Not every computer is different, but different computers require different keys. Some of them you hold down F7 during boot to boot from a USB flash drive. Some of them you hold down F10 or delete. But there should be a key you can hold down to have your computer's firmware scan for bootable drives and display a menu of bootable drives, and so you would select your flash drive from that menu. So now that that's done, I am going to show what the actual installation process is going to look like for Ubuntu. Once again, I am using a virtual machine today because I don't have a spare computer laying around right now. But this process is going to look the exact same if you're on a physical computer. So first, the Ubuntu disk is going to do another check, just making sure that all of its files are intact. Your installation media hasn't been corrupted over time or anything. After that, we are going to be given a choice to either try or install Ubuntu. 
and there it is. So if you just want to install Ubuntu, you can click install Ubuntu to start the installer. If you actually want to launch a live session so you can maybe do some partitioning work before you install or anything else you might want to do, you can click try Ubuntu and it's going to launch the actual desktop session. All right, so now that we're in the desktop session, I am just going to open up a terminal really quickly, and I'm gonna run a few commands to get a better screen resolution here in VirtualBox. All right, so now we've got an actual 1080p screen here for Ubuntu, and this is a full Ubuntu session, so if you're on a physical computer and you want to adjust your screen resolution, you can open up settings and go to the displays section. VirtualBox has been kind of weird recently with its resolutions that are detected, which is why I had to do it through a terminal. But when you're ready to actually install Ubuntu, there is a desktop icon here to install, and there's also an icon at the top of the dock on the side, so we'll click on that one. And that is going to launch our Ubuntu installer. After we select our language and our keyboard layout, we are going to be given a couple of options. Now we can either do a normal installation of Ubuntu, which includes things like LibreOffice, Rhythmbox, extra software that you might find useful on the machine, or you can do a minimal installation. And I really like that Ubuntu started giving you this option a while ago, because with a minimal installation, you've got Firefox installed still, but you don't have a lot of the other larger programs like LibreOffice. You don't have media programs like Rhythmbox. You don't have Thunderbird. So the minimal installation, it's less software that's installed. So if you don't use a lot of that software anyway, or if you don't want to install it until you're actually going to start using it, the minimal installation is going to not include those things. So that when you go to install updates, you're not having to download those large programs that you're not using anyway every single time that you update. With that said, I'm going to choose the normal installation for this video. I am going to choose to download updates while installing Ubuntu. And since I'm on a virtual machine here, I'm not going to check the install third-party software for graphics and Wi-Fi hardware box. If you are on a physical computer, I would recommend that you do check this unless you've got other drivers that you're going to install later anyway. For example, if you're using a System76 computer and you're going to install their driver, you can uncheck this one because you'll install yours later. After that, we'll click continue. And it looks like my virtual machine uh, reset its resolution again. There we go. The next page of the installer is going to ask you what you want to do with your disk and your partitioning layout. Now this virtual machine had a blank drive, and if you had already wiped your computer's hard drive with Gparted or another program, then you'll probably also see this screen where it's saying you can erase the disk and just install Ubuntu on the entire disk, or you can create a manual partition layout. If you're running Windows or an older version of Ubuntu or something like that, you might see a few more options that are offering to automatically resize your Windows partition and install Ubuntu alongside Windows. Personally, I usually like to just do the something else option to create my own layout in that case. But if you're not too picky on the actual sizes, then you can feel free to choose one of those automatic ones. Now this advanced features button will give us some extra options. We can use LVM in order to encrypt the drive. We don't need to encrypt the drive if we're using LVM. But LVM is logical volume management, and I'm actually planning on making a video about that in the near future. We don't need this for a, a basic install, but if you're planning on doing a lot of complicated partitioning things with your disk, then LVM might be useful. And if you want to do full disk encryption on your system so that, for instance, if you've got a laptop and you want to make sure if somebody steals it while you're traveling, they won't have access to your data, you can full disk encrypt with LVM. The actual encryption is handled by Lux, but LVM is required in order to use that. We're not gonna do that in this video, but it is there if you want it. And then there's also an experimental option to use ZFS for your root partition. Now, I am a fan of ZFS. I've got a ZFS RAID array in my desktop right now. However, I've seen that kernel updates can break ZFS sometimes. And it's not like there's any data loss, but it does mean I can't access my files until I resolve that issue. So personally, I'm not ready to install my entire operating system on a ZFS partition. ZFS is not part of the Linux kernel. It's an extra sort of add-on module, so it's not going to be as smooth as standard partitioning formats like ext4. So with those things in mind, I am going to stick with none, but I wanted to bring those up because both of them are things that I can see a lot of people wanting. After that, we'll click install now, and we are going to be asked to confirm. It's going to tell us exactly what it's going to do. 
We'll click continue to accept. And now the actual installation has started. Now, while it's running, we are still going to answer a few more questions. It wants to know our location. This is going to be used for the time zone mainly. It's detected that I'm in the Denver area. It's going to ask for our information, and this is going to be used to create our user account. So you can enter in your display name here that's going to show on the login screen, the computer's name, which is your host name. Your actual username is down here, so your display name shows on the login screen, but if you ever need to log into the full screen terminal on one of the other TTYs on your system, you'll need to type in your username, and then we'll also choose a password. I'm going to keep the option to require the password to log in, and I'll click continue, and you can see it's already almost finished copying files. It was running that whole time. Interesting that they've hidden the progress bar until you get done with those steps. But you can expand a terminal here to see some more information about what's going on with the install. And we've also got a slideshow up here that's going to show us some of the features and selling points of Ubuntu. We can see Ubuntu software, which at this point is really just a rebrand of GNOME software. You can install new applications in Ubuntu software, and you can also update current packages in Ubuntu software if you want, even though Ubuntu still includes their own updater separately. See what else they have to offer here. Rhythmbox is the music player that's installed by default and they've added a few plugins to Rhythmbox to make it a little nicer to use. Here we've just got the standard, standard set of applications that they're advertising. Ubuntu has added a dark mode that you can just very easily click on to switch to, which is neat, and we'll take a look at that after the install is done. And that's the end of the slideshow. So at this point, you can just sit back and wait for the install to finish. All right, and the installation is finished, so now we can go ahead and reboot the computer so we can start using the installation. And the virtual machine's resolution is going to go back down here. On a physical computer, it's telling you to remove the installation medium, so take out your flash drive, and then you can press enter. If for some reason you're still using a CD or DVD, then that's why they use the word installation medium, so that it can apply to any of those things. Uh, but at this point, you can see we are booting into our Ubuntu installation. We will get our login screen, and I can go ahead and log in here. And after just a moment, we are presented with the GNOME first time setup wizard. We're going to not add any online accounts right now. We're not going to set up live patch, and I'm not going to send any system info to Canonical right now. And we'll go ahead and turn on location services. And on the final page of the first time setup wizard Ubuntu, it looks like it's going to present us with some software recommendations after it finishes fetching them there. So I'll click done to get out of that. And after I finish fixing my screen resolution one more time, we do have our finished Ubuntu installation. You can see there are immediately package updates that are available, and this is still the Ubuntu software updater. Like I said, we could either install these updates here, or we can close out of the software updater, and if we open up Ubuntu software, we've got another program that can do the exact same thing, except it tells the software is up to date. If we check for updates, it still thinks software is up to date. Interesting. All right, well, I guess we'll go back into the... Ubuntu software updater then, and we'll let it install whatever it is that it's wanting to install there. While that's running, I am going to open up our system settings, and we will take a look at the appearance tab. So this is a feature that was already in Pop! OS for a few versions, and Ubuntu has now integrated it into their default desktop. So if we open up the file manager here, you can see Ubuntu 20.04 has this new theme, and it's based on Adweta, so it's more in line with upstream GNOME, which is going to make applications look a little bit more in place on Ubuntu when they're designed with GTK. Software updater's finished, so I will get out of that. Um, so you can see we've got a default standard theme, which I think was a good idea for them to include. Standard being that the title bar is a little bit darker, so you can clearly make it out from the rest of the window, and then the rest of the window is a light theme. However, we can switch to a fully light theme if we want to, which looks more like a Dueta. Or my personal favorite, we can click on the dark theme, and you can see the entire application is now a darker color scheme. We can also customize the dock, so if you're coming from a Mac and you want it on the bottom, for instance, we can do that very easily. But at this point, we do have a fully installed Ubuntu 20.04, so that is about all I had to show you in this video. Now, if you are already running Ubuntu 18.04 or 19.10 and you want to upgrade, I'm going to be making a video about how to do that as well. So if you're watching on YouTube or Dailymotion, make sure to subscribe. All of my videos are also available at nerdofthestreet.com, and you can go to nerdclub.nots.co to support me. But for now, that's Ubuntu 20.04. I'm Jacob Kaufman, I'm the Nerd of the Street, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye.